Hi, and welcome to another Holistic 3D tutorial. In this series, I'll show you how to create and control an agent on a nav mesh by adjusting its speed and the areas in which it can travel. In this demo, you can see the agents navigating the scene and avoiding the dark purple areas. However, when I press the space bar, all agents will have to make their way to the bottom of the scene, at which time they ignore the fact that they must be avoiding the purple. To follow along with me as I go through this tutorial, you'll have to set up a scene similar to what I've got here. Now, all of these blocks are from assets, import, package, and prototyping. In there, you'll find a whole lot of things that it wants to download, but you can just go through and check all of the geometry sort of objects, which are these blocks and that, and bring those in. You don't need any of the code that comes with that import. Now, what I've done here is I've created a very simple street scene. So this is the sidewalks down here. And then I've got the building walls with a little door to get into the building. And I've got a street as well. So the street is the same blocks as the sidewalk, except they've got a different color on them. And this is going to be the crossing where you can cross the street. And this is more street here and more street here. And over in the hierarchy, I've actually named them so I know which thing is which. So here's my two crossing. Now, all these are just glorified cubes. There's nothing special about them whatsoever. I've just laid them out like that. Now, the other thing you'll need are goal positions where the agents are going to move between. So if we just zoom in a bit here, you can see I've got these goal positions set up as little white default cubes and they're all named goal over in the hierarchy. So add those in. I've got one at each end of the street and I've also got one inside the buildings so that the agents will go inside now and then. Okay, so once you've got that set up, what you want to do is select the world. What I've done with these obviously is I've um, made them children of an empty game object called world so that they're all together. Now what you want to do is select that parent. Let me just make this a bit smaller for you. Go over to the inspector and you want to select where it says static, drop that down and go navigation static. And that will make your planes and cubes and whatever you got in your scene able to become a nav mesh. Now, once you've done that, you're going to open up the navigation window, which is under window navigation, which is down here, and then go into the bake tab and click on bake. And that will give you all the navigatable areas in your scene. And you can see them there. They've come up in blue. Now, at the moment, the road is also navigatable. Uh, you can't see the blue, obviously, because the blue of the navigation is clashing with the road color itself, but it is still blue and your agent will be able to move everywhere. In fact, let's go ahead and make the agent move around the scene between these points so that we can see that it will freely go anywhere. Uh, just zooming in, this little white dot here is not a cube goal, it's my agent. And that agent is just a stock standard Unity capsule. So you want to go into your hierarchy, right click, 3D object, capsule, and then add in that capsule. And then select your agent. In the inspector, you'll want to add a nav mesh agent to it. So we just go add component, and then you'll find nav mesh agent in that list and add it. You don't need to change any of these settings whatsoever. But what we are going to do now is write this wonder script that's already attached to our agent. So create yourself a C-sharp file called Wanda, and this is what you'll want to put in there. So this is the starting code. First of all, you'll need to add in the Unity Engine AI library at the top so we can access the nav agent. Then we're going to have a public game object array of our waypoints, which is the WPS. The cubes in the scene are essentially the waypoints that we want our agent to travel through and we're going to put those into an array so that we can pick them out at random. After that I'm going to capture the nav mesh agent controller that is on our capsule. So make sure that you put that in nav mesh agent. In the start function is where you grab hold of the nav, 
nav mesh agent that's attached to the capsule with a get component that you can see here. After that, I'm going to generate a random number, which is just an integer, and this will get the random goal location out of this array up here of waypoints. So we just pick one of them at random and then we say agent.setDestination, the position of that waypoint. And all it needs is a vector three in here for you to travel on the nav mesh towards something. Right, so once you've done that, even without anything in the update, the agent will start moving automatically towards the destination goal because of that nav mesh agent that's attached to the agent. But what we want to do is say when the agent gets to the destination, pick another random cube to travel to and then do that again. So in the update, we're going to say if the agent's remaining distance, this remaining distance here holds the distance that the agent currently is from the goal cube. If we're at a distance less than 0.5, then we're close enough to being at that cube location. Obviously at zero, we would be at that cube location. Sometimes it's really hard to check if you're at zero because an agent might be moving a lot. There might be other agents around and it might be impossible for your agent to get exactly at zero at a destination. So I always give it a little bit of a leeway of distance here. So when we have reached our destination, we then pick out another random spot to go to and then we set that destination here. Right, so once you've got that, save it. Then you'll want to go and attach it to your capsule. So here's the script right at the bottom that has been attached. Now there'll be a spot called WPS, which is an array waiting for you to put the goals in. To put all of the goals in, I've got my goals in the hierarchy all listed underneath each other here. What you can do is you can go with the capsule selected, go to the inspector and click on the little lock to lock this in place. Select with the shift key all of the goals and then drag and drop them onto that array of game objects. Now press play and you'll find that your agent will freely move between the cubes. So it'll pick a spot where it's going to go and then it will pick another spot once it reaches there and you'll see it traveling to that spot. Now, if you want to see the path that the agent is taking, you can select navigation and you'll be able to see that be highlighted down here. And you can also select your capsule while you're in navigation window and you'll see that the areas that the agent's going to travel across will be highlighted. Okay, now you can see in this case that the agent is just walking straight across the road, not taking any interest whatsoever in the crossings as being separate things. Right, so with that now working, let's force the agent to go across the crossings. Now, this algorithm underneath the pathfinding for the nav mesh is the A-star algorithm. And if you know anything about it, what it uses is different costs for traveling across different areas. And it's almost like a, an RTS, well, that's what an RTS does, is it puts different cost areas to stop certain agents going across certain areas. You know, for example, if you have maybe, I don't know, a battalion of horses or something, it costs more for them to go across a river than to go over the bridge. And so that's what we're doing here. We're going to make it cost more for our capsule to go across the road rather than go via the um, crossings that we've set up for it. Now, it's important to remember that there's no height difference in any of this stuff, okay? It's all on the same level. But what we've done is we've set the roads up. They're all separate meshes and they need to be in order for the nav mesh to find those polygons that it needs to set that different cost for. To create a cost over in your navigation, go to areas and it will show you the costing that it already has included in there. And these are the built-ins. You've got areas that are walkable, areas that are not walkable and areas that you jump. Now we're look, not looking at jump for this, but you can see that the walkable parts are that light blue color and they show up quite nicely in the scene view. 
Now we're going to go to the user three and in here we'll define a new area and we'll call it road. And then in the cost, we wanna make this quite expensive to go across the road. So let's set it to 10. Now this won't stop the agents going across the road. We still want them to be able to go across the road. And if the cost was too dear for them to go across the crossing, they would just duck across the road, um, which is what normal people do. But in this case, by setting it to 10, we really are forcing them to take the crossings. We don't want to make the road a non-walkable thing. We could set the road to be not walkable and then it, they would never go on the road, but we don't want to do that. So we've added this road in and now we need to assign it to these road sections. So you've got the road. Now you're going to go to the object tab for navigation. You're going to select the part of the road that you want to set up as a road area. And then over here in the object tab for navigation, you'll see that it says road. That's the one we've got selected. And what you can do in the navigation area is you change it, it should be already walkable, you change it to road. And then you want to do that for each of your road segments, make them all set to road. Now when we press play, the agent will go to its destination via the road. We might need to wait a while until it picks a point that's on the other side. Here we go. And so it's going across the road and then it's going to go up there. And if you make multiple agents, so let's grab our agent and duplicate it a few times and then press play. So control D to duplicate. And you'll see that they've all got their own random locations. These guys obviously went up to the crossing to go across. Aren't they good? And now these guys look like they're about to go across the crossing. Yep. Okay. So they're all taking the crossing, which is all nice. Now, what happens though is a problem if you speed them up. So if I select all these capsules, I bring my other agent down so they're all together and then select them all. Remember to unlock the capsule so that you're affecting all of these guys. Then over in the inspector, you want to get to the nav mesh agent and set the speed to say 15, speed it up. Okay, now let's just check they all ended up with 15 as a speed. Yep, okay. Now press play, then select the navigation window so that you can see where the agents are calculating their paths. And also if you select one of the capsules, you'll see the exact path for that capsule that is being calculated. What you might notice now is that these agents are quite happily going across the road. They're heading in some cases for this path, but if they have enough momentum, they will actually swing out onto the road. Let's just press play again to watch that more clearly when some of them head off across here, like this guy. So he's gone on to that mesh. These guys down here have gone onto the road. And the nav mesh is clever enough that if you're already on the road, it will recalculate the path for you anyway and give you, it won't stop dead in their movement. Okay, so this is obviously an issue and we want to be able to slow down the agents so that they don't get this happening to them. And you'll find them around the doors as well if you have a look just here, is if they're too fast to get through the door, then they'll just bounce back and forth until they can slow down enough. Each agent if you select the capsule and have a look in the inspector, is that they have an auto braking, which will allow them to uh, slow themselves down, but not enough. There's not enough control over it. So in the next lecture, the second part of this series, I will show you how to get a little bit more control over the acceleration and deceleration of your agents so that they don't go off into areas where you don't want them. Remember, if you want to know more about programming of AI in Unity, then check out my Udemy course devoted to all types of AI for controlling NPC behavior. And if you'd like to support this channel and see more great tutorials come up for free on YouTube, then consider visiting my Patreon page and signing up 
and have a look at all the different benefits that you will get, which includes free access to the Udemy courses. And one more thing, please subscribe and help to make this channel the most popular Unity tutorial channel on YouTube.